and welcome to another pilot.dog flight. This marks our first flight with a volunteer. All right, this is Mary Margaret, and she is our first in-flight volunteer for pilot.dog. And tell all of us why you wanted to volunteer. I love dogs, and I think the mission that you're doing to help dogs is wonderful. Plus, I like to fly. So it's a good, it's a win-win. So thank you for inviting me along. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right, you thanks. too. A lot of people, I think. Peggy Harrell from the SPCA Alliance of North Carolina contacted us about transporting two dogs from Rocky Mount, North Carolina to North Adams, Massachusetts. Both were hounds and weighed approximately 50 pounds. Mac had recently had one of his hind legs amputated. Skyline 431 initially maintained VFR 2000. Departure frequency 125.3, squawk 4672. All right, maintain 2000, 125.3 in the box, and 4672 in the squawk. Skyline 431, right back, Rick. Soon we were taxiing out to the end of the runway. And I have to mention the great support that we received from Plato Pet Treats and Smiling Dog Coffee Company. Both companies stepped up and provided a number of great uh, products and samples and things that we could share with the rescues and the pilots to just reward them for their service and caring for the dogs. And plus, you know what? The dogs really love the treats and the pilots really love the coffee. And also a special thank you to Pilots to the Rescue, one of the paying patrons on Pilot.Dog. Thanks, guys. November 431, runway 5, right, fly runway heading, clear for takeoff. Right, right, cleared for takeoff, runway heading 431. So Big Mac had had one of his hind legs amputated after being struck by a car. Apparently he was found wandering and was found limping on the side of the road. He was picked up and taken to a shelter. A veterinary specialist was contacted and since his knee had been so shattered, there was no way to fix it. And Mac had been limping for a while, so it was decided to remove the entire leg since he wasn't using it anyway. Max owner was contacted before the surgery but could not afford it since he had just lost his job. So the SPCA paid for the surgery and Mac is now healed and ready to be adopted. And here we are taking off out of Raleigh Durham International early in the morning and we're headed over to Rocky Mount, North Carolina to pick up the dogs for flight. It was a fairly uneventful takeoff. Mary Margaret was a great Passenger and volunteer. Roger 52431, thank you. Uh, you clear to Rocky Mountain Via, direct that UV, and then uh, New Rio, obviously, that's the next approach, big to Rocky Mountain, and uh, you can maintain uh, 3,200 for now. All right, 3,200 for now, 431. As you can see, as we headed towards Rocky Mountain, there was still some low line. It wasn't, it wasn't fog, it was just a low ceiling that was sitting right over Rocky Mountain. So, I decided to uh, file an instrument flight plan in the air and we would do an approach into Rocky Mount. That way I could st stay higher and then we could descend as we got closer to the airport going down through the clouds. November 5, 2, 4, 3, 1. I do show you five miles from a, a UV. Maintain 2,700 until established on the approach and I clear GPS runway 4 into Rocky Mount Airport. All right, 2700 will establish only approach cleared at Rocky Mount 431. Thank you. Uh, there's several approaches. Is that what that means? Yeah, there's different. This is an instrument landing system approach. I'm doing a, a GPS approach. Okay. So what this tells me is the exact route and the exact altitudes. We can go down to 200 feet above the runway. If we see the runway at 200 feet, we can land. <laughs> so we're just going to go down through the mist. We'll get below it. Uh, it's, it's calling 1,300 foot ceiling, so this is just, since we have time, I'm just going to use all the precaution in the world. Yeah. Willow, the other dog we were going to pick up, was found as close to death as you can imagine. 
She was so weak she couldn't even lift her head. Peggy from the SPCA said, quote, poor Willow had just about lost hope in the shelter. When we got her to the vet, we found she had hookworm, ringworm, and was dehydrated and starving. She had run away from home a couple of months before, and she was found wandering the streets, scared out of her mind. She's all healed up now, and she's gained 16 pounds, unquote. It turns out while donations were being requested to pay for Willow's care, Willow's owner found out, and he wanted his dog back. He came to see Peggy, and Willow was so afraid of him and wouldn't even wag her tail when he called her name. This told Peggy everything she needed to know. And by this time, Willow was legally hers, but she wanted to be fair with the man and said, hey, if you can pay for her care, uh, we'll exchange Willow and you could be on the way. But the man couldn't pay or didn't want to pay for Willow's rehabilitation. So at that point, the man shook Peggy's hand and told her she could keep her. He also told her that Willow had just had four litters. So poor Willow had been through a heck of a lot. And here we are arriving in Rocky Mount. The dogs are Mac and Willow. So there they are at the fence. Yeah. Hey! I'm Steve. Hi, Hi. nice to meet you. Hey, Tommy. Hey, Margaret. Hey, Margaret. Oh, Tommy. Lawson and Tommy were such fantastic people. Oh, Our sponsors. Oh, really? Awesome. Play Doh, yeah. which is treats yep. for the dogs, and then this is amazing coffee. I had some this morning. It's delicious. It's from Smiling Dog. Really? Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. twenty-five percent of their sales go to support rescues. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the dogs greeted us. They were so kind and peaceful. Thank you so much. We have a dog at home. Oh, good. Thank you. Enjoy that. Oh, so sweet. Yeah, they have. I know. We asked them not to feed them because right. that way they won't get sick. But that's, and they didn't. She she had just enough food to take that. Food. That's fine. Right. Yeah, because we don't want her getting sick. With She's that. got her tail between her legs. Hey, Big Mac. But well, you know, they said that he um, wasn't using the leg much, so he was mostly going on one leg. Hi. I know it. And um, hi, Willow. I found that because I didn't know until today I was love. asking me at the vet's office. I will really love. He was hit. On the way to Rocky Mount, we received a text from the pilot meeting us in our stop, Georgetown, Delaware. Scott said he'd be just a little bit late due to ground fog in New York, and he was unable to take off. We told him that was okay, stay safe, and we'd wait in Georgetown, Delaware for him. And then it came time to load the dogs up in the plane for our flight to Delaware. Tommy helped lift Big Mac into the plane. And Pam got them all harnessed, arranged, and strapped in in the back. You know, saying goodbye to the dogs from the fosters, from the rescues. It is, you know, it is an emotional moment. Uh, they're not baggage. They're, they have souls and personalities, and everybody gets attached to them. The rescue dogs that we fly are such kind-hearted souls. Lawson and her husband Tommy met us at the airport with Mac and Willow. They're volunteers for the SPCA and agreed to transport the dogs to the airport for Peggy. 
and what wonderful dog-loving people they are. They treated the dogs as if they were their own. We gave them a gift bag from our two wonderful supporting companies who donated these items to the rescue. Smiling Dog Coffee and Play-Doh Dog Treats. I have to say, everybody involved with dog rescues are such kind and wonderful people to work with. We loaded up and took off in some light low clouds and headed for Georgetown, Delaware, where we'd meet Scott, who would take both dogs on to their final destination of North Adams, Massachusetts. It was a two-hour flight for us to Delaware. It did get a little chilly up there. The Pam came prepared and had blankets for the dogs. She covered them up and made sure that they were nice and warm. And she was kept warm by them snuggling up to her. You know, when dogs are cold, they like blankets. And we set the blankets onwards with them so they'd have something familiar with their scent on it to comfort them. At first, they were a little uncertain about cuddling the Pam, but in no time, they had their heads on her lap as she rubbed their heads and ears. And they soon bonded tightly with her. Cancel because of bad weather, or how do y'all do that? Well, I mean, uh, this is why I like to do primarily end-to-end -end flights, so we don't have to meet anybody. Because since I'm an instrument pilot, you know, we can go into bad weather. Okay. Um, if we were going all the way to Albany, we could go up and land there. But he must not be an instrument pilot. So most of the flights that we do are like up to Pennsylvania. Okay. Then we meet the rescue on the other side. I, but it's always a worry. I mean, you know, you get some place, you meet somebody, and they don't show up. What do you do? Oh, yeah. Matt and Willow were amazingly at ease with each other, considering they'd never been together before, but they acted as if they'd always known each other and been together. Here we are flying up the Delmarva Peninsula. That's the Atlantic Ocean on the right side and the Chesapeake Bay on the left side. Mary Margaret and I got to enjoy all the views up front and we talked all about all of her experience in dealing with people on the eastern shore and Pam sat back there just cuddling and taking care of the dogs. Of course, you know, once in a while Mary Margaret and I would sneak a pet or a head rub back there but we enjoyed the view on our way to Delaware. And I have to say, they were kind of beautifully smooth skies and it was a perfect day to fly. Soon we'd be in Delaware, so our time with the dogs would be over. Or so we thought. There was more to the adventure. There's Big Mac getting his head rubbed with Willow with her paw on his nose. <laughs> uh, so cute. More of the Maryland, Delaware countryside as we pass over. There's Mary Margaret. Oh, she was such a joy. An angel of a volunteer. And it was so awesome that she was our first volunteer. If you would like to register to be a volunteer on a flight, just go to pilot.dog slash volunteer and uh, sign up. And we'll send out an email with the uh, next available trip. And if you're available, respond. And uh, we'll get you on the plane. We fly out of Raleigh, North Carolina. So you just got to make it there. And here we are coming into Georgetown, Delaware. I love this airport. They've got a great restaurant up there. And... It's uh, named Arenas, I believe. And the food there is wonderful. The staff there is wonderful. And here we are landing, getting ready to meet Scott soon and uh, get some lunch. The quality of the restaurant is always one of the determining factors on where to land. Every pilot knows that.
So after an uneventful landing in Delaware and then taxiing up to the terminal, we were ready to kill a little bit of time uh, as Scott was flying south. Pam and Mary Margaret were going to care for the dogs as I cared for the plane, pushing it back into its uh, place there. There were some other dog pilots that had apparently picked the same airport to transfer, and uh, they, they were moving dogs into another plane when we landed. And Mary Margaret took the dogs up to the grass area. Well, we were killing time at the restaurant, and the dogs were hungry. They kept putting their noses up in our food, near our food, and they obviously wanted to eat. But thank God we had the Play-Doh pet treats with us, and they loved them. Those chicken thinker stick things that Play-Doh makes did the job and filled them up just enough to make them comfortable. So we decided that we needed to get further north to help Scott because Scott finally took off around 1.30, but texted he had a dilemma. Since it gets dark early and his airfield was a grass strip with no lights, he needed to be back home before dark. His flight to Delaware would take about two hours, and then two hours back, and that wasn't including dropping the dogs off in Massachusetts. So we volunteered to fly further north to shorten his trip. And after some planning, we loaded up the dogs and flew another hour north to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Lancaster Tower, Compassion 431. Compassion Flight 431, Lancaster Tower. Uh, Lancaster, we're currently 25 miles to the south, east inbound landing, Lancaster. Compassion Flight 431, make straight in approach, runway 31, report a 3-mile final. Straight in 3-1, we'll report 3-mile final, 431. By the time we got to Lancaster, Scott wasn't there yet, but he would be soon and he had to turn right around and head back to beat the dark. We knew we wouldn't have much time to meet Scott, but, you know, he really has to be praised for going above and beyond and making the extra effort to connect with us. Uh, we got a big train yard down there. People on the right-hand side of the plane can't see it. You know, people always ask me, when I'm on a commercial flight, how come the captain always says stuff that's out the left-hand side of the plane? Because <laughs> that's what he can see. <laughs> Flight 431, runway 31, clear to land. 31, clear to land over Boca right now. So here we are making our approach into Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it, it's it's starting to get dark. You know, in the in the winter time, it gets dark early and. Even though the skies were pretty clear, a lot of a little bit of high clouds, it was getting dark. <laughs> so we made it down on the ground, and then we taxied over to get fuel and also go to the FBO. Here we go. Here we go, princess. Little girls and boys, y'all better not be getting used to being spoiled. <laughs> it's too late. That's okay. Room. You want to come out? It's not yet. <laughs> Take it up, baby. Yeah, y'all are sleepy. Yeah, they are. They're sleepy. Mm -hmm. Aren't you, Willow? He said, "Oh, no. All right, you want me to take one out? Yeah, you can take. You can take Willow. 
You ready, Willow? Come on, Willow. Come on, baby girl. Okay, go. I got it. Okay. Maybe yeah. that's the part. The FBO there, Alliance Aviation, welcomed us with open arms and said they were a dog-friendly place and we could take the dogs inside and relax. So Mary Margaret walked the dogs over to some grass and then we took them inside for a little bit of rest. Before long, as soon as I had filed the flight plan, Scott landed and it was time to say some tearful goodbyes before Scott and the dogs were off to their foster home up north. Kathy Hines with Got Spots was taking them in. Our sponsors who sent you, <laughs> these are goodies for you, dog treats, right? coffee, coffee for you. <laughs> oh, nice. and more dog treats. Okay, thank you. So. And from Smart to Smile Dog Coffee and uh, Play-Doh Dog Treats, the dogs love them. Yeah. Kathy, where the dogs were going, is a former military and flight nurse who now works a flexible schedule so she can care for her foster dogs. We helped load Willow and Mac into Scott's plane. Oh my goodness. That was sad, but exciting. And I know. <coughs> it's, it is. <sighs> it is hard, but the good thing is they are going to a better home. Otherwise, if we didn't do this, oh, they'd be dead, and I can't handle that. Can't nope, I, I, I can handle this so much better. From where we were in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, we had about a three hour flight home now. We had to fly around Washington, D.C. and then back down to Raleigh, North Carolina. Cessna 52431, runway 31, line up and wait. 31, line up and wait, 431. Lancaster Tower, Cherokee, November 9182, Whiskey. Midfield downwind, 31, rainbow 21, free off X ray. Remote 214 Golf X ray, Roger. If you can, uh, just for this pass under the left downwind runway 26, and uh, then I'll get you back in uh, right and left close traffic for 3 1. Under the left downwind 26. Cessna 52431, runway 31, clear for takeoff on departure, fly runway heading. Alright, clear for takeoff, 431 will fly runway heading. Remote 214 Golf X ray, that uh, jet is about to beam the numbers on the right downwind. Uh, four golf X-ray, we got him on traffic information. We'll wait for him for final. Oh, we got him, four golf X-ray. Hey, must two on four golf X-ray, Roger. That traffic's a full stop. You are clear for the option number two. After completion, you can uh, resume the left close for three one. Okay, clear for the option number two two six. We'll join the left down with three one after completion. Four golf X-ray. As you can tell in the video, it was getting darker, and I realized there was no way we were going to make it home before dark. So I had filed an instrument flight plan for our flight home and a perfectly comfortable landing back home in the dark. But um, that's my second choice. But we did discover how hungry we were because we hadn't had anything to eat since lunch and it was getting later. We were sad and we had done a great thing for the dogs. And the sun setting just seemed to, you know, amplify our emotions. Luckily, though, we discovered there were some more of Mary Margaret's amazing sausage biscuits that she had made to take on the flight, and <laughs> we found them. And that was our dinner, I think, you know, these, these little sausage biscuits, and we snacked on them. And they were delicious. And we flew down the Chesapeake Bay, and just had the most amazing sunset flight on the way home. It was the perfect end to a perfect day. Nineteen seven will send via the southwest seven thirty seven right there. November four three one contact approach on one two four point five five twenty four fifty five. Twenty four fifty five four three one good day. He's descending into Baltimore.
approach, Skylane 52431 with you at 6.0. 52431 for Dover, Altamore, altimeter 3038. 3038. At this point in the flight, I, I was literally just mesmerized by the beauty below us. The Chesapeake Bay, the boats on the bay. There's Chesapeake Bay Bridge right there. South 57, contact departure, 135.65. Right straight ahead. 2565, Southwest 57, good day. Good day. So, Annapolis will be on our right side. Okay. That's Kent Island, on the other side of the Bay Bridge. Oh, look at this, Pam, off to the left, they're building some sort of island. Oh, wow, they are. Mac and Willow had already made friends at their new foster home. Before we ever got home. And Mac was already taking a nap as we watched the sunset and Willow was watching TV. Since we landed, this is a picture that we received of Willow when she first made it to the shelter, how emaciated she was. But now, this is when she arrived at the foster home. Max made a new friend, and he's uh, running around the backyard following his new friend, the pit bull, and they're having a grand time. You can be a part of our dog rescue team. Just visit us at pilot.dog and become a patron. You can pledge as little as a dollar a month. You can set a cap on how much you want to give each month. It doesn't matter. Any amount helps. Please help us save dogs.